Brace yourself as we dive into the ultra-violent world of Cookie Cutter. A new hand-drawn 2D Metroidvania from Subcult Joint LTD, and today we talk through if this game has the legs to stand on its own next to others of its genre. Let's find out right here on First 30 Podcast. <laughs> First 30, I'm your host, Chad Callahan, and alongside me are the cookies you left in the milk too long. Tim Harris. Lou. David Marino. Keep your cookies and milk separate. <laughs> and Rick Weirdbeard Hogerhide. Oh, did he freeze? <laughs> oh, he froze. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I thought this was a bit. Is he actually not <laughs> this there? Was a bit, too. I thought it was a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> We need to keep this part in and then just cut to him coming oh, back. Oh, no. <laughs> you can dunk me all you want, baby. Oh, that was very nice. Okay, so, all right. It's nearing Christmas, and cookies are all that I think about around Christmas. All right, I want to quiz each of you. Best Christmas cookie. Tim? I mean, it's it's gingerbread for Christmas for sure. Hmm. It's so good. It's a fair one. It's I feel so like there's good. more. Gingerbread is a good one, but there's there's several different Christmas ones in my opinion. But David, uh, the our Christmas cutout cookies. What's what what kind of flavor like is sugar it? Cookies? Yeah, like like sugar, sugar cookies? Yeah, like sugar cookies. Yeah, I butter? guess it's like a they're sugar cookies, but they're they're crisper than that. I bet they're more of a butter cookie, which is my favorite personally. Uh, Rick, what are yours? What's yours? Best cookie? Stained glass window cookies. What's that? What is that? You know where you like um you melt down Jolly Ranchers and you put them in between <gasps> so it looks oh. like a stained glass in between. Oh, interesting! I've never, I've never seen, seen that never before. Had that, but I never. really want. Okay, now I'm gonna Google stained glass <laughs> cookies later, <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna make them. Google them. I, I I'm intrigued. You might have changed my opinion because like I love me a butter. Like you know those like tins, those really like tin cookies that like your grandma always had yeah, the button she put her like yeah but you'd yeah, open it up and there's sewing stuff Aww, inside yeah you'd, you'd <laughs> every be time. upset um i love those cookies those are my favorite cookies since i was a kid like they are around delicious. christmas time my mom what, always the ones gets me with them. the little the little red thing in the center yeah oh yeah the, had red, the red jam yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah those ones are the best oh, best cookies anyways sorry i got on the <laughs> I got on a tangent about cookies. It was just uh, he was just fishing for recommendations. Yeah, he didn't want to exactly. order favorites. Sure. I'm, I'm gonna go and look for stained glass cookies <laughs> uh, and gingerbread. Uh, anyways, uh, to move on, I have something completely out of left field for you guys. Uh, Rick is gonna take us down the corn hub uh, hole. The corn <laughs> hole. Yeah, because uh, we're gonna we're gonna find out who is the most searched video game character. Of all time on Cornhub. Oh, no, for uh, 2023. Oh, for 2023. Oh, just this Sorry. year. Just this year. Yeah. So uh, Cornhub actually just released their most searched for video games on their website. Um, some outliers that are really weird. Real quick, I'll give you the rundown of the top like five. Fortnite, okay. Overwatch, Minecraft. What? what? Pokemon, okay, They added Atomic more Heart. characters to Minecraft, so now they're more diverse. They are boxy pixel box <laughs> what yeah. are you talking about i mean they're <laughs> also i thought the whole point was just sort of put on your own skin yeah well the, the bedrock's different so you can't really do that as oh, easily. all right uh Fine. some some weird ones that snuck into their top 30 list cuphead was on there okay um, well this you know, one that's got big lips so i could see it it dropped 10 spots from last year but that makes me wonder why was cuphead so popular last year because <laughs> um, the, the dlc released with miss chalice among uh. us is on that list detroit become human of all video oh, games yeah. is on there um splatoon made an appearance for the very first time and there are they children it kind of feels they're like it. squids they are not oh, even squids okay yes. i never played it so i Squid thought they were like children. kids <laughs> Yeah. Oh, they're like squidlings I mean, or like, something like that. The lyrics, the lyrics to the song are "You're a kid now, you're a squid now." So, <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm not too far off. That's creepy as fuck. All right, I'm out. And then Sims Four was also making the list. Like you I obviously have some ones that, like Valorant, of course, Genshin Impact, the uh, Super Mario jumped up 19 spots from last year. <laughs> Probably um, a movie. And the other one, like Call of Duty was in there, too. And that just was like, why? 
Call of Duty of all. Yeah, does Call of Duty even have like characters? Yeah, do you think it's because someone spends so much time on Pornhub (laughs) that they forget they're not on Google? What? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) They just have that's their recommended. I wonder uh, because you know uh, there, there is that market. There is that market for like legitimate trailer leaks and stuff to show yeah. up on these sites instead of like legitimate video sites. So I wonder if that's what people are searching for. They're like, I want to, I want to watch all the leaks. Maybe. But what I want you to do is I want you to guess what the most searched video games on corn hub in 2023 were. So, uh, I'll of course give you the very first one. The number one most searched character is Chun Li from Fortnite, As everybody knows, oh. um, but I have the list of the top 30. You go ahead and name a character from video games. And again, it's in 2023. Go ahead. See, Who do you think is on here? I was going to guess Among Us crewmate. Not on here, unfortunately. That would be the weirdest okay. thing to be on this <laughs> list. Okay. All right. So as a uh, master dolphin flogger, let me tell you. I don't know what I that know means. Three characters that are going to be on this list. Okay. Three off the top of my head right okay. now. It's going to be Tifa Lockhart. Yes. Oh, 100%. Number, number two. Laura Croft is number four. And the Dommy Mommy from Resident Evil yeah. Village. Yeah. Yes. Number Lady five. Demetrius. There yes. we go. Oh, Tim got top five. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to say <laughs> Diva from Overwatch. Number three. Knew it. I knew it. Like, even, like, it's it's even on Instagram. Just name, like, just, just start basically. naming all of the female characters from Overwatch. So <laughs> that one, sni- the sniper chick. Is there men on here? Is there a male, male men on this list? Number six is a man. Same with number eight, and you won't guess either of them. I promise you. No. Are they popular think, think or not? Weird popular? stuff. Very popular. Sonic. Number seven. Oh or number my six, god! I'm sorry. That means Mario's on this list. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Is he on the list? Number eight. Oh, oh my yeah, god! There's those We're, two. Why is this He's so a plumber. Weird. He's laying pipe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dang, it's too easy. You're right. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm gonna be really upset because I already know the answer. But Dante is not on this list, is he? Correct. Not on this list. Oh, it's Bayonetta. Um, it's a good choice. No, not, not on the list. <gasps> Oh, that oh, that's upsetting. <laughs> I'm done with this game. I'm out. I don't want to play anymore. Oh, Chad's not I don't playing anymore. I can't did even think Princess of anymore. Princess Peach make the list since Mario did. No, Princess Peach oh, did not oh, make the what list. About, wow. um, what about the <laughs> Wa Peach leak? <laughs> no, Wa Peach did not oh, make Wa, the list. No one jumped one. on Wa Peach that quickly. I got one. That was that. No, I'm sorry. Mario is oh. the only Mario character that's on here. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I, I thought they were going to do that whole Bowsette thing from like what is it two years ago? Here's a here's a tough one. There's a Pokemon on Cornhub's most searched video game characters on their website. What Pokemon is it? Uh, Starts the G. I forget the name. Garivor, Gardevoir. Gardevoir, Gardevoir is on it. Correct. Really? Yes. You know what? I, oh. it's so funny. Kiefer caught one the other day and like he said something about it being like referenced sexually. And I was like, really? And then yes. like, that's the only reason I knew well, that. Chad, have you, have you never read the Vaporeon copy pasta? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why right, that one's getting linked in the chat later. <laughs> yeah. God, wait, is this like, should I, should I be worried? Like, no, just, like, just yeah. keep, keep your life moving. I promise you'll be better off for it. Um, oh, okay. Some of the other weird ones that made it a, a like, appearance on here ruby from Fortnite, um jill valentine from resident oh, evil ruby like r-w-b-y r-u-b-y uh oh, that is then loba from apex legends oh, samus oh, Aran, an easy one freya from god of war um you have a couple of league of legends characters like ari um lots of genshin characters Obviously. and then the the one that like stands out the most, maybe because I just don't play Genshin Impact, is uh, a character named Slime. Slime. I d- d- Lord knows. Is it just a slime? Yeah, but <laughs> is it just gonna be a slime like from Genshin. Dragon Quest? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it's, blob a, slime. it's a slime. They're the Dragon Quest slimes. Oh my yes. god. They're <laughs> elemental slimes. That's exactly. the tentacle people guaranteed. It's the tentacle uh, people that did that one. Ah. Uh, well, oh, that's God. uh your weird most searched video game characters on Cornhub. And the the one thing I will go to the like go to the mat over is the fact that there are too many sexy Overwatch characters. They need to make repulsive monsters from now on because 
it's just <laughs> it's it's too much. You got to balance it out somehow. You know what? And the worst part is all the sexy characters still not saving the game. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, but we're here, not here to talk about how sexy video game characters are. We're here to talk about a video game. Well, I guess we are talking about sexy video game characters in this. Anyways, no, we're not going to go into this rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> today, we're playing an ultra-violent, hand-drawn, lesbian 2D Metro Metroidvania. This is Cookie Cutter. Cherry gave life to me. She is my happiness. One night, Infonet came for us. Also, a quick reminder, you can find this on YouTube at youtube.com slash at First Dirty Podcast. Um, so let's get right into it, David. You were the one playing uh, Cookie Cutter. And yes. um, I want to talk about two things. Well, one thing first, and that's the art style to this. It is hand-drawn is what they uh, claim it, which is interesting because like when I think hand-drawn, this isn't usually the like the way it looks. I think like more of like Cuphead, and I guess there's some element of Cuphead-iness to mm-hmm. it maybe but like I it doesn't feel hand-drawn to this me. this feels hand-drawn it's just like a kind of a regular animation whereas cuphead was going for a very specific type of animation yeah. where it's like you know like that 1920s fleischer studios type thing this just looks like you know, it would be on adult swim or something like it, it looks like a standard yeah run-of-the-mill animation well can we talk can we talk about tone real quick because it's like the animation is not um when you say animation i don't want it to be confused this is not like kitty animation oh like, god no <sighs> this is i wouldn't say it's like mature but it's definitely not a uh, little kid Wait, is it pg-13 or like a, a a light I don't R. know. I would still say I it's would argue R a little that it's bit. leaning towards R, but it probably didn't get there because they censored that one word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? I mean, there, there was that one guy we came across where his skin was boiling and his guts were hanging out. And yeah. He's just chilling. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I think there's a little bit of it to me that feels like it's almost to the point. Like you know how they made Deadpool rated R versus like PG thirteen. I feel like it's that. It's like it's Deadpool level rated R, not so much like you know maybe beyond that like swordfish or something like that i'm trying to think of like a crazy movie that reference but uh, saw. So, hold on swordfish yeah, saw. with halle berry well there's nudity in it that's the only reason but i that's know about like, it chad i just i'm more upset that that's the your go-to i like. was trying to think of a movie <laughs> with nudity in it that like and i always think right. people i to be fair i've never watched it so i just halle go berry. off of what people say yeah. and hugh jackman he's in it yeah. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Interesting. But, I mean, yeah, like this is it was interesting because yeah, we you mentioned it. There was they said shit in it, and you're like, okay, cool, that's fine. But then they said F instead of the F word. And yeah, which they spelled it out though. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. It's it's right on the cusp. I also don't think that it was like like there's gratuitous violence, but it's not um like gross out gratuitous violence. What was that game that uh that came out earlier this year. There was like a Geiger type game. It was super scorn. scorn. Yes. Okay. Oh, where you literally look down your. Yeah, exactly. So that's, thingy. that's yeah. gratuitous. This was like, sometimes there was like little panty shots of the main character when her skirt would float up, but that was like the, the worst. I think that it would kind of get. They also, uh, when you're teleporting as your, uh, skin layers are going, they do show your breasts and your skin underneath. Yeah. Very quick flash, that. but it's there. Oh, yeah, it's a few we, frames. we're completely glossing over a, 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 a thing. All right. So this is like a, a Metroidvania. You go around, but you're a robot who has a vagina <laughs> robot. Regina. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Regina. Yeah. That talks like to you're you. like your Jarvis. And I don't <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the fact that whenever the character of the vagina robot is talking, there is a light that lights up <laughs> in the robot's in crotch. Specific, you know what? This is perfect. Oh, my God. I just thought of the reason. All right. Because a bunch of men are going to play this game. Now they know what that where that light is. Go for that light, guys. I will tell you this as someone who doesn't go for that myself. 
I'm giving you this as an option so that way you can have more um, fun times later. I'm going to be real. I don't think that's going to help them. Most people don't have an issue <laughs> finding the, the place where you put things. They have an issue finding the button. <laughs> okay. Well, no, no, no. Well, you, if you focus on the lights, it, I, from what I hear, things are good. So um, All right, no, we're done I'm with getting it. this from women, so, so I don't know like, about it, This was more, I don't know, like it. I think the takeaway it was <laughs> <laughs> the vagina robot wasn't gratuitous. That's the word I'm going to keep no. using here because it was like it was there. I it's would playful. Uh, it's playful. Exact. It's tasteful. It's tasteful <laughs> garbage. Yeah, yeah, it's a tasteful vagina robot. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like can we, there's one part of the storyline. So basically, the storyline is your your creator is you know worked for this facility and like did horrible things and decided to like not do horrible things anymore. And like created you, which was their like last, uh, I don't know, creation, like cyborg thing. However, she falls in love with her creation mm -hmm. and then they become like lovers and then essentially is dragged off. I don't remember. Did she die? Did the creator die? No, no, she got taken. No, she, she got, just she got, got taken. so far. She just gets dragged off. Okay. So yeah. So you, I guess the whole, point of the story is to find your creator slash lover which i don't know i just something about that that really rubs me the wrong way um i don't know how i feel about that like the storyline like the creator lover aspect of it is just kind of sitting weird with me but well, at least they just be in my at head. least it's canonical and they didn't like lightly be like oh they're roommates who really are into <laughs> yeah. each other <laughs> <They're> roommates. <laughs> yeah. let the fans fill in the gaps yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. kind of like her there's there's people out there that fall in love with ai things all the time and it's becoming a problem <laughs> so i don't think it's necessarily far-fetched that you could create something that you want to look at and then all of a sudden it's ai and you're like well i think i like this thing you know i don't think that's i that guess <laughs> i guess it's just a, it's such a weird uh aspect for me that i just have a hard time thinking about i don't know it, it's it's you know it, it's in a weird like uh motherly thing that i think i have a hard idea like you know yeah, what I mean? I mean like oh i created this thing it's Fair my enough. child almost you know and i know it's not the same but it, there's something about it that makes what if she up ordered the robot <laughs> See, that's different because she didn't create it <laughs> Fair she, like, although you know you raise a good point like if i literally like we're putting someone together like i'm like building a pc or something I'm, like, like an ikea, what, uh, an like, ikea yeah. shelf oh yeah like i'm just ordering it and picking out the piece like, how is that any different than putting it together myself i guess so i guess you have a point fair enough i think that this game like i i want to i don't want to be overly critical because I don't like off from the very top. I'm going to say I didn't dislike this game, but it felt um, maybe lacking of a polish. I don't know what the exact what it was like. It was it felt like it was almost there. But like even the the um, the voice acting, we got it for like a whole bunch on the front end. Right. Yeah. And then as soon as you go out into the world, no more voice acting. And you're like, ooh, that kind of knocks a couple of points off. And yeah. like the 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 gratuitous the the like violence and some of the you know other stuff felt fine but it didn't feel like it like they didn't go whole hog into it like it, it felt kind of not childish i don't even know what like they're holding either, back but. a little bit like they're yeah, trying like, to get a pg-13 rating it felt like it was um because you know how like uh marvel can pull off something and make it look not dumb and then other like dc movies you'd be like oh that looks stupid like what's going on here <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is the dc of it yeah like oh. this this felt like the like it was just almost there you almost had the tone right you almost had the characters but it just didn't totally hook me to the point where i'm like oh hell yeah this is this is phenomenal you know what i mean do you think that that's because it started off so violently and then it just kind of dumped you in the world and then the tone just you know what? shifted a lot from where <laughs> it that did. was it is very violent at the beginning especially because you watch her like be destroyed like right. i mean i get that like technically she's a robot or you know or a cyborg or whatever but like still it's very violent and then yeah like they're beating up stuff and sure you rip things in half but like it's all covered with this glossy like effect yeah. over everything like there's more robot -y effect so it, it kind of reminds me of Oh, shoot. Uh, near Automata, where like you're by beating up robots all the time. So it doesn't yeah. feel violent, even though you are <laughs> being violent. <laughs> it has that same effect to me. I don't know. David, what did you think while you were playing? 
about just the aesthetic? Yeah. Yeah, like the feel of it. How did you how did you feel like they nailed it or was there like more to be, you know, I think desired? Art wise, I'm pretty happy with it. It's I don't like I don't know what program they're using to do this, but they choose to do a lot of zoom ins and like close ups of stuff, but the art doesn't scale when they do that. So like if you punch in a little bit from however like what the standard camera does, like things get blurry really fast. Mm. Even like your little attack effects just at the standard distance you can tell like you can see the pixels yeah. on them they're not filtered or anything it's it's very low resolution for what they're presenting yeah, it's kind of annoying actually yeah i i didn't i didn't notice that but i don't know but and you yeah, probably I, wouldn't have over the stream that's true to be fair the stream was kind of hard to watch <laughs> it was getting digitally on my end it's, it, yeah i guess we had that issue too but like i can appreciate what they did with the overall aesthetic because i really like how they actually set up specific animations for like your overkill mechanic for like every different creature that was available yeah that was really that's cool. cool but everything else was just so i don't even know what the word is just so tame compared to that it just yeah. kind of didn't feel right <laughs> it yeah, was weird like the the coolest death, like when you were you were fighting, was against that like, worm thing with like the big head, and then you'd go and basically strangle the worm to death, and its head explodes. Its head like pops, that was, yeah. yeah, it was insane. It was insane. Like I was like, that's literally the level of intensity I thought this was going to be throughout the entire right. thing. And sure, you're like ripping bugs in half, but for some reason, it doesn't have the same god of warness to it you know yeah, like where he's ripping the, people i was half. just thinking about like kind of that visceral feeling you get when you perform a quick time event or even in the new one where you just go in for a fatality in the god of war where it's just like it's so punchy and like the physicality of it in god of war is much heavier than yeah. this like this you know you do the little animation it's a couple of frames i think that's the other problem with this is they're very economical about how fluid the animations are so you get a tear it'll look like you know one frame starts the tear and then like it pulls apart and kind of holds on that and then there'll be like one or two out frames so you get i guess i guess you compare it to like anime where you get like a flash of action but the action isn't really there it's like the smear mm, yeah yeah compared trying to, to bad put a lot anime of... david <laughs> <laughs> Banime. I don't know. Didn't I? <laughs> how, how did you? <laughs> yeah, I forgot David's not an anime fan. Uh, so roast him in the comments, please. Um, <laughs> anyways, I do want to talk about one thing that was actually very well done. And yes. I think w the overall vibe, I think, is really good. But the music really, really sell, sold a lot of this game to me because especially when we hit that arena, I don't even yeah. know. It was very like heavy metal. I don't know. Cyberpunky. Like it just, it was a very good vibe for it all. Tim, I don't know. You want to explain maybe better than I, I'm not good at genres. It, it was like almost like techno core. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, it, yeah it, uh, it borders on like metal, but like it was much more, techno influenced in my opinion um it's good music but i do feel that the tracks need to be a little bit longer personally um because they looped really quickly oh, did they? that was, was one of my main issues because they're the end of that track was a bop don't get me wrong it was amazing like the beginning's a little bit light but the like the middle and then the build up at the end is amazing but that loop just lets me down every time because it goes back to the beginning <laughs> like it's not as hard as doom like doom no. is <laughs> melt your face off right yeah um but it's i'm trying to think of a like it's kind of like mortal Kombat, like in the same vein almost yeah. where it's like it's fair it's rock but it's not butt rock like it's yeah. it, it's it, it's metally kind of rock but it's not like Rah! i don't know like it was good um i think that the other thing that they did really well with is um uh, des deciding on an aesthetic of like what the world is like like there's a lot of um cyberpunk the, the world is kind of destroyed and overrun by these uh these uh robots called denzels which is a weird whatever it's a weird name but <laughs> i respect anyone named denzel he could pick yeah. out anybody all right so so there's lots of where at least as far as we played there was um a lot of you know like uh 
factory settings and barrels and boxes to break out and everything like that. Like, I think that's especially with a Metroidvania, the thing that you have to stick to the most is in an area. Does it feel like there's an identity and not just, oh, here's a whole bunch of hallways that you get to run through? Like, you could at least feel in the section that we played, hey, I know what the vibe of this place is. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Sure. It, like, if for anyone who's like play or watched uh, Cyberpunk uh, Edge Runners, yep. is a hundred percent like that. I won't say it's like that vibe, but like overall, like it's similar to that. So if you like that, you might enjoy the vibe of this. I think it's a little bit more gritty than Edge Runners. Like Edge Runners is very like vibrant and colorful. This has vibrance and colorful, but it's like on a very stark gray black background. So it's really hard to kind of I don't know. Uh, see the those connections and that's probably what my only complaint is like all the backgrounds kind of just blended sometimes but i don't know overall i think they did a really good job at really making this a really cool vibe so i think the at least they got that part right <laughs> also a quick reminder you can find more on our youtube channel at first 30 podcasts um we just did a hidden gems episode where we all talked about our favorite like hidden gem mostly indie games that you probably haven't heard of so i mean christmas is pretty much here well by the time this comes out it's i think it's, it will be past it'll be christmas. over it'll be over but, <laughs> <laughs> but you can uh, go and maybe find a sale uh on some of these games so you know what are they called boxing days or it's boxing day sales or whatever it's a christmas or, or the canadian one yeah yeah canadian i was like that's post christmas right that's what that means i don't i actually don't know what boxing day was i still don't know what it means like is that like a like that's what I thought. I thought it was like that was a day where people were boxing. Like I thought it was I'll like boxing people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like I thought like people were like fighting each other after Christmas. I was like, that's one way you got the family frustration, I guess. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, not to drown on that one a little bit too much, but David, <laughs> I want to talk about the controls because you played this on um, Steam with a controller, correct? I did. Yes. All right. How did it feel? Because I'm before you answer. I said during the stream, which you can go watch on the YouTube channel as well, by the way. Um, I said during the stream that it was a little, if it looked clunky. Now, I don't know if you would agree with that or if that's just like, well, the way the stream made it seem. But do you want to take us through the controls a little bit? Well, it's, I wouldn't call it clunky. It's fast and actually quite responsive. But... The, the the combat, at least right in the beginning, because, again, it is a Metroidvania. Things could open up later. But at least right now in the beginning, it's very stiff. It's very um, a lot of one basic things. A lot of basic things that you think would be there isn't like you have a fixed jump height. You cannot short hop at all. If you tap or if you hold, your jump height is the same. Which was annoying when you were time. trying to jump over it like so there's like low saws and you had to like jump past them, but like you yeah. kept hitting them like oh, he, he did oh, figure oh, that oh. out. He, he I mean, did oh. the vault and figured yeah, that you, out. Yeah, you can you can vault when there when there's a ledge if you're if you're running up against it and jump, you'll just vault and keep low. But while in combat, you only have one jump. Your basic attack does damage but it doesn't do anything else so like you can't wail on one enemy and then like pay attention to the crowd because you will just get attacked through mm -hmm. that by the enemy you're wailing on you can interrupt it by using your the heavy fist but if you're just going in and like you got you know you run in and wail on a couple of guys one will probably just attack you through that and like you'll have to counter or dodge out of the way the dodge is actually pretty good um it gives you some it gives you some distance and it feels like the you can dodge through damage so you don't have to worry for like, you know, iframes or anything like that. The parry, there seems to be some complaints about it being inconsistent. It didn't really feel like that, um, at least like when I was trying to do it, it felt like it cracked off. There were a couple of times where it didn't work, but it felt like. You know, like I maybe the window wasn't available to do it yet, especially those wormhead guys that like attack you twice in a row. Uh, so like oh, if you miss yeah. the first one, you're guaranteed to miss the second one. But the other thing with the enemies, especially those wormhead guys, since they attack you twice in a row, they don't seem to have any sort of like reposition 
state in their attack pattern like they will just continually attack you over and over again like there will be one two combo they'll be on the other side of you and then they'll kind of like walk forward a step or two and then one two combo again like they're just constantly going back and forth yeah um the, the AI I, was definitely not like. Um, oh god, it was stupid. Like, yeah, it was, yeah. like they'd be it's down, so they'd be down like two levels, and they'll just be attacking, like still attacking. It's like I, then, yeah, I don't know why it was. Except for the bugs. Like relentless. The, the bugs are other than the, oh, the yeah. controls. The the combat design of the encounters is pretty lacking, especially for these basic enemies. Uh, the fact that they throw a heavy a heavy enemy at you that can only be attacked in the air. And you have no air counter, air dodge. Uh, the only thing I could think you could maybe do, and I didn't try it, but like even just thinking about it in my head, it feels like it would take too much time, is you could ground down and then either slide or roll out of the way. But that feels like it would take a lot of time uh, to do that, like you know, one, two, or maybe like one heavy attack, and he's already mid- uh, wind up attacking you going down and then rolling out feels like it would take too much time yeah might need to check that but yeah having a enemy that you attack in the air with no because you can't uh was it the parry you can't parry in the air either no yeah at least out of out of in the beginning like there's no option to do that so if you're attacking in the air until you land on the ground again you are completely open yeah and i don't have an issue with that kind of mechanic in these kind of games. I don't have a problem with forcing a player to not get greedy and make them get out of the way, but like giving that thing so much health in a game that's pretty much action oriented really slows things down when you have to constantly go in for one hit and then get out of the way. Well, like, I wouldn't it just mind feels it having so much this. health. I just hated the fact that, yeah, what you just said, you go in, hit it once, run away. Go yeah. in, hit it once. Right I don't away. have it's an like, issue with that. Boring. I in hate games that. that are not this action paced, like an Elden Ring, perfectly fine with that. Like that game is supposed to yeah. be a little bit more meticulous. This one is like an action game, <laughs> so you should be but in action. You know, usually just, in Elden you know, Ring, there's like you, ha- there's like li- usually like a couple options. There's not just one attack run away like over and, and over and again there's, like there's you, a lot of enemies that you get like one window and you need to get the fuck out of dodge but <laughs> i know, know but there's still you're like is, it being a 2d on 2d scale versus a 3d scale i think is what makes this so much more boring <laughs> at least with that aspect oh, I'd, I'd still be mad about it if it was 3d though because it's uh, it's an action-oriented game it's supposed to be fast yeah. paced and when they bring you to that crawl it just feels completely out of place in my opinion it was frustrating to watch. Now, one of the other things, too, that like we tagged this at the top as a lesbian robot Metroidvania, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> um, Metroidvania is usually like it's all about exploration. You have a giant map of just like blankness and you fill it in as you go through. You're going to run into a bunch of doors or obstacles that you're not going to be able to overcome. So you got to go find a thing, come back, uh, unlock it, open up new paths, yada, yada, yada. Do we feel like this? Um, was a sufficient metroidvania like did it have enough stuff that we discovered have wall so chickens far? or it wall did. meat or whatever <laughs> wall meat yeah there's there was also definitely some areas that we don't have the ability to open yet mm-hmm. there was those big silver the balls. yeah the big balls which i don't like you hit them and they put up a shield but it yeah. didn't do anything um there were those gates like the one-way gates where you like come up for the other side to open up a path and then and wall jumps key, oh yeah it's places that like it looks like you could get to if you could jump a little bit higher like jump off of something yeah i think the only thing because what there were the the one-way gates flip it to open up a thing but there were some like that one that was directly over a jump pad yeah I'd, I don't know how you open that there. There was it didn't look like there was a switch nearby. It was kind of out by itself somewhere. I don't know what would trigger the, your ability to use that. Yeah, I'm sure it does there's feel a like lever the, somewhere. I'm sure there is, but it doesn't it's not like clear that that's where the where that what that would be open from. So I yeah. see what you mean, Dave. It's like they didn't make a clear objective of like, oh, this thing yeah, opened by this, you know? Even if they don't want you to open it yet, you should, you know, have a little ant line or something that goes up 
or you can follow it to the switch and be like, oh, the switch is up there. I can't get to that yet, but now I'll know what to look for. Or yeah. maybe you get a technique later that you can open doors with. Or we maybe just maybe. crush through bars. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or yeah, too. you can jump, uh, the ability to jump through bars, yeah. which you can duck through the floor, but you can't wedge yourself in between <laughs> metal bars. I mean, it, it felt like... <clears throat> There was stuff there. I the the point more that I was hoping to be able to to make is that I don't know if it made me excited to find how to solve the ball thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when Oh yeah, no, I I would agree it doesn't. Yeah, like it's just like, <laughs> oh, more shit. Like great. Yeah, um, you go you go through and that's that's kind of the thing too, is the map the layout of the map is kind of plain. We only had we we're only in this one like factory area, but going through and like encountering a new room. And then, you know, you have to use the combat to get through the room doesn't feel good <laughs> like, it, you know, especially in those arenas where it's like, OK, you know, you take care of four or whatever guys and then one spawns in and there's two and then you take one out and then there's one. But another one spawns in like either. Spawn give me an amount. Show me how many. Yeah, like give me a wave counter. Yeah, you know, a wave counter or spawn them in waves. You know, like you take care of this one and then, okay, wave two. Da, 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 everybody mm -hmm. teleports in or just have everybody teleport in and at the same time, because there's no collision. You know, the enemies aren't bumping into each other. Maybe it's an engine limitation or something. Can't have that many animations on screen, whatever. But yeah, just that constant, you know, like I take care of a room of guys and then one spawns in. Take care of one, one spawns in, take care of another one. It just, slows like, down. It just feels tedious at that point. Like it's how like, many more are there gonna be? It reminds me how how it should be is remember when we played Dead Link and like how fast paced and it was just constant. It was just like, okay, we know what we have to do, we know what the objective is in this arena, like we know how many enemies there are, and like we know that there's a big guy over here. Like you always knew what to expect in this arena like we didn't know anything when you dropped in you just knew doors were closed we had to wait till it was over and hopefully it was over so we kept going oh that's the last one. Oh, never mind oh that's the last one. Oh, never mind and it was like hard at the beginning and then yeah they just it, it was just more boring because you had to like fight one or two at a time yeah. after that and it's just like that's, that's the other thing too arena. is you have like enemies don't like they have their own individual attack patterns, but they don't fight as a group. So you get into position or into situations where like you attack a guy once or twice. And while you're doing that, someone's already running in to throw a punch at you or those fucking the flies with their red projectile <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Your mortal enemies. Those are the worst. And they, like, go, they went through floor. They went through the, the floor things, yeah, which I thought they went, was annoying. They, went, they go through the, the level itself. But yeah, that's. I think I said during the stream because a lot of it was reminding me of Guacamelee. If anyone anyone played Guacamelee, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Guacamelee is really good uh, yes. and it fixes like if this looks really good, but you're kind of agreeing with the stuff we're saying. Oh, it should do this. This it has this the other thing. Like Guacamelee does all that stuff. <laughs> <Go play>. Guacamelee <laughs> is a really good example of how <sighs> one of these like brawler Metroidvania should play. My only other complaint i was going to add on to this was just like we got upgrades right and i thought when you got upgrades it was just like okay that you have the upgrades and i know tim's gonna disagree with this but i think david you're gonna be in my camp uh <laughs> i don't love the fact that you have to equip it and then you only can have so many available like i i think if I think you should just be able to always have it. That's a Hollow Knight thing. So they in Hollow Knight, they have all the different badges and you right. can only select X number because otherwise you'd be I, OP. I, if you're I don't able know to do all of them. This was what my comparison was going to be like this game. Exploration wise does not feel like a Hollow Knight. And that's where it needs to be to keep my attention, because like that game has set the standard and the equipment too. Chad, <laughs> see, I'm I'm a fan. Like, and maybe this is like the the you know 2010 gamer in me where i always loved games where like you could always you know oh i got this new thing and i just have it like i don't have to like oh, let me take off this one and put on this one <laughs> and oh which one do yeah. i want between grab and jump you know well, like that, i don't hate i hate stuff like that 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 has a place like you can swap out different stuff if you want to like boost some things but yeah maybe, that's fine you know, yeah you're not using it but especially in a metroidvania 
and m- like even more so in like an action game, you should always start competent. Like you should basically be able to play the game, not beginning to end because they're going to lock off paths or whatever, but you should be comfortable with where the game starts you and then you gain power from there. This feels like you're gimped and then it's going to give you the tools that you need to yeah continue instead of just like oh i have this ability now i can unlock a path like we got what was it the ass kicker mm-hmm. yeah. or just a damage boost yeah but like something like that i should just be able to like oh i i bought the upgrade <laughs> yeah and now i do more damage like I that think- that shouldn't be something that you slot I'm 100% on that with you because like it, it felt weird like oh I, it, it felt more like that should just been like a, a level up quote unquote like oh now I'm just yeah. stronger you know right. why is that an ability uh, you know what I mean like uh, it would be different if it was like okay leg attacks are stronger versus arm attacks or whatever like that I get having a difference because like maybe I like you know kicking things more than punching things but the fact that it's just a general boost of strength that's just a, that's just annoying again i think it's meant eventually you're supposed to have so many that you have to balance out and decide do i want to boost my melee attack or do i want to boost my heavy or like whatever yeah. it is but i or think you it can like, think about it from a world building perspective as well like you know just think about it that way like you're you're a robot you know in a, in a regular rpg you're getting stronger because you're you're training right a robot's not going to get that <laughs> I, so I, I think I, you're reading far too into this. Yeah, I'm I just think saying. at the end of the day, though, the the issues I have with the exploration also are in this little conversation in the fact that it didn't feel like there was purpose. Like it, it, yeah. there was lots of purpose just missing to. Oh, I, there's places. Why mm-hmm. do I have to go through them? Oh, there's I upgrades. Asking, why do I need them? That's fair. I remember asking midstream, being like, "Where are we going?" And you were like, "Oh, I got to <laughs> find this guy's poem book." And I'm like why your girlfriend got abducted <laughs> isn't like, like why do yeah. we care well, about this poem that was, book because i think i think the old man gave us a mission too but yeah the yeah. guy playing guitar we needed to go find his lyric book and then the old man we had to go find that other thing and yeah i mean that's that's what you're going to be doing those those objectives are which lead you further along in the map I guess it just it just it just doesn't fit the tone. But I would say like, hey, do we have any open grievances? But <laughs> it sounds like we've aired them all out. So I'm just going to move on uh, straight into the final say, because, um, man, this has been a little bit of a grievance haul. I To be fair, I want to I want to preface this. This isn't necessarily a bad game. It just feels like there could be more like. I, maybe it could be saved. I don't know um, in some capacity. But since David played the game, he will be going last. So we'll start with Tim. Will you continue? Um, <laughs> Ooh. So I really, really, really like Metroidvania titles, right? I'm a huge fan. This one is not singing to me. It's not. It's really, really not. Um, I, I like where it's going and I like the idea and I really love the animations and like all of that stuff is cool. I just don't feel like this game's going to pull me in though because like the exploration just felt boring and like the combat there's not enough going on. There's really not. It's like it's all just so simplistic and just kind of feels like I'm going to be mashing one button the entire time for the most part. Like Pretty maybe much. it gets better later. I don't know. Or maybe they're still adding stuff to the game. Hopefully, but. Yeah. Cause that's, that's the other thing too, Ugh. is I know Tim complained about the lack of combos uh, while we were going through the stream. There aren't any combos. You have a three hit light attack combo and then you have a three hit heavy attack combo that's it that's all you can do Mm -hmm. other than that like uppercut punch down thing they kind of showed you in but again the tutorial area that's three (laughs) doesn't yeah i mean it doesn't even really work most of the time anyway because you're in a constant fall arc anytime you're in the air like in guacamelee (laughs) when you air attack (laughs) if you air attack an enemy you hold them in the air so you get a couple of punches to be able like you know set something up and then continue your combo but this you're in the air punch punch and you're already on the ground again there's there's nothing you can do yeah like i'm I'm coming fresh off the back of like uh playing uh the last faith and i have i don't own that yet but i'm going to and that game even its demo uh 
just feels a thousand times better than this. And like, I apologize. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a jerk. No, I think I this mean, is a game for some people, but it's not for me. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out on this one. Whoa. No. <laughs> I thought he was going to play like the saint over here. Like, well, it's not that bad. So I'll continue. No, <laughs> no Tim's not continuing. Wow. All right, Rick. Um, will you continue? I watch a lot of cooking shows while I eat dinner with my family. <laughs> Okay. And this reminds me of like Gordon Ramsay eating a steak and he's like, listen, <laughs> it's not burnt. However, you said it's supposed to be medium rare. This is a medium well steak. It just ain't doing it for me. Like you said that way too calmly. I'm just going to say if you're Gordon Ramsay, you fucking donut. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Like it's it's it. I don't want to say so close because it's not like it's not on the verge. There's a lot of good things I think in here. This is not mm -hmm. like a oh my god, refund this game. It is uh, you know a mess. I don't think that at all. I think that the developers put forth a pretty competent game. However, there are enough uh, missing polish items that make it so that I just, I don't think it's worth my time. Like when I'm competing with Cobalt Core, Final Fantasy 16, uh, Baldur's Gate, you know what I mean? Like I can list how many other games that came out. It was a good year out. for games right now. Good year and for games. You want me to take away time from that, even other indie games, you know what I mean? And go to this. Um, it just doesn't tickle my fancy and I'm, I will not be continuing, unfortunately. All right. Will I continue this game? All right, I have to say that as much as I really want to support a hardcore lesbian in action. With a robot vagina. With, with a robot <laughs> vagina, I cannot get past Does that technically how... make any encounter a threesome? Of course. Technically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just can't get past. It, it, it felt like to me, and Davey, correct me if I'm wrong. It felt like to me that the like fighting was more frustrating than fun. Am I in the am I on the right side of this? I I wouldn't even go as far as saying that it's frustrating. It's just a chore. Like the combat Which is seems not, frustrating to me. It's not. <laughs> yeah. It's it's easy though. Like right now, it's easy. Like you mash either your light attack or you just group everybody up against the wall and you just mash heavy it, attack. It just feels times. incomplete. Like, is what it feels. All right, yeah, incomplete. it's not. There's no. There's a very pronounced lack of depth mm -hmm. to how just, you engage any of the enemies. It just seems not fun to me. Like fighting doesn't seem fun, I and mean, that's literally the entirety of like this game. Like if there's other elements to this game, I could be like, well, at least there's that part that I I could see maybe being fun. But none of this felt fun, and that's like the biggest part of it to me. And so, I, for that reason alone, I'm just not going to continue. As much as I want to support the idea and the and the designs are wonderful and the animations are really cool and I love the vibe, it just didn't it just didn't look fun overall. But David, you're the last up. Will you continue? I will continue. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> this the, the Tim um, of the group. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I want to see if it opens up any because it's very limited right now i've seen from the store yeah. page you get you there's a weapon wheel you get a selection of things to replace that punchy arm we picked up so there's mm -hmm. like other other things you can get i want to see if maybe you can unlock combos like maybe you can get a xy xy combo going you know light attack heavy light attack heavy something like that anything cool. to open this combat up other than just like mashing a three hit single button attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but no, you're absolutely right. The combat as is, is not fun. The exploration is incredibly lacking. The part of the map that we've seen is pretty dull. Like there's the, I know. there's like two rooms of saws. Well, the, even the stage hazards aren't very inspired. And that alone, and, that, and it goes back to what I was saying earlier, you start in this really colorful area and then you're just in dark gray, like facility it's just like what happened to all the really cool things we were just looking at it's mm -hmm. just gone and that's the most yeah. frustrating thing about that so i'm curious i'm curious to see if it opens up any um 
But if it doesn't, I will continue, but I probably won't finish. Okay. Interesting. You can try to resell us later if you change your mind. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, we should uh, find out in a future episode if it was worth your while at the end of it. But we got three no's and one yes. Recap recap any game that i continue on the <laughs> yeah. next episode be like oh this is <laughs> how it turned out guys episode. uh but if you are interested in this game it is uh 1999 and you can get it on xbox series x and s ps5 and it is obviously on steam so thank you guys for uh watching and listening to the first 30 podcast and if you want to see more insanity don't forget we are on youtube so you can go to youtube.com slash at first 30 podcast <laughs>